A lot of artists think about how do I get more streams? How do I get more sales? I want people to buy my music direct to consumer, but they don't understand the middle part. How do I actually break myself as an artist so I matter beyond just the streams? Because that's what's gonna get people to support you in terms of the consumer and buying from you as your own entity, as your own brand. So how do you build your brand as an indie in 2024, 2025 and beyond? That's exactly what we're gonna do in this video, part one of Breaking an Indie Artist. I'm Brand Man Sean. And I'm Corey. And this is another episode of No Labels Necessary. All right, so the first thing that artists have to understand when it comes to breaking yourself as an artist is it, it's all about image, yep. right? Yep. So most people have this issue. I have a song that started to go viral, right? When you are blessed with the ability to have a song go viral or when you have a song that just starts to pick up streams, right? You pick up steam, people hear the song. They love the song. I have maybe 50,000 monthly listeners on Spotify, but I have... 1,000 followers on Instagram, right? 500 followers on TikTok. They don't know who I am mm -hmm. yet, yep. right? And getting people to buy from you, they need to know who you are. Uh, you can't just pop up day one. Even if I listen to four or five of your songs, right? And I actually really like your songs and you as an artist in that way, when you pop up and, and ask me to buy something, if I don't connect with you beyond just that music, I'm not gonna buy from you. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. I have to see you beyond that, and be, see, I have to see you. Period. Let's just put it that way. I can't just hear the music, all right? Because think about all the people that you actually hear their music, you listen to their music, but you never see them on social media. Yep. And you're a regular consumer brand, not the artist. I'm trying to support an artist, or I'm a deep music head. If you ask yourself truthfully the things that you, the music that you hear and you actually like and you actually under, know the name of the artist but you don't ever see the artist and don't connect with them beyond that how many of those artists would you invest in if they just asked you to buy from them directly whatever that looked like right merch a show the music whatever that is right so because of that you have to break your image get people to see you love you within whatever your niche is and one of the primary ways to do that is PR. Yep. Social media PR. We're not talking about the old school, you gotta get in X magazine and and or you gotta get on the traditional outlets on the radio. Start small, start manageable and achievable, which is I need to pop up on whatever these Instagram pages that my audience follows, right? Whatever these TikTok pages or conversations or influencers that my audience follows. What does that look like? A little bit different for everybody. But first, what we're going to do is break down six different post styles mm -hmm. that every indie artist should know and use. And then we're going to get into some of the caption and headline breaking down. It's just some of the science that we use on campaigns where we've blown up artists, broken artists, all that good stuff. So let's get to post style number one. Post style number one is straight up music driven. Yep. All right. Okay. This is getting shared on another page. And I'm going to pull it up. What's it going to be? Because I can't. Play. All right. So this is, how you say her name? Jalen Josie? Yeah, Jalen Josie. Jalen Josie singing right here. And if we go to every single slide here, Day. she's singing. Mm -hmm. So she's a singer, right? Now, how is this a music driven post? It doesn't have to be your song. It's just something that helps people understand very clearly that you are an artist mm -hmm. and it's displaying your musical talent. Yep. Right. Some level of post like that. But the mechanics of this particular music driven post style, Ja'Cory, I'm gonna let you break it down. Yeah, so I mean, you pretty much touched on it, right? Like the, the goal of this post was to let people know like, hey, she can, she can sing, right? And so I do think that's the big point of the music style PR. You're trying to make sure that whatever conversations or decisions get made as a result of that post all have to do with your music and music ability. So like her, for example, she's singing, but you know, it could have very well been her rapping or her playing the guitar or her playing different instruments. Something that, like you said, if I'm a regular person who's seeing her for the first time, I immediately think music artist. And, you know, ideally, if it's if it's good stuff, you immediately think, oh, and they're nice at whatever 
the musical thing is they're trying to get me to believe in. So she's a singer. So obviously the first thing she wants people to think is that, hey, she can sing, right? Mm -hmm. Which is, this post is, um, if you go through it, just different examples of her singing different songs. So she gets to show her range. Um, she gets to show her taste and her influences, which is another way to connect with people. Oh, you're singing a Whitney Houston song? I know that Whitney Houston song. Now that's a whole nother thing for me to, mm -hmm. um, to relate to you about. And, you know, I also think it allows her just to kind of like show personality a bit. Cause you see in like a, a lot of different sides, some of them she's like dressed up, some she's underdressed. And so she didn't, all of it isn't even necessarily like this super like high quality, like high effort content. Because like you said, the emphasis is on the musicality. It's not on yep. like, if, is this a good video or not? You know what I'm saying? Like, and so I think personally, music style posts are probably the hardest of all of them to pull off because why is that? Because it, it can't be swayed as much by narrative. You know what I'm saying? Like you you can't like if it, let's just say let's just say in a in a in an Austin universe she couldn't sing as well and she did this style of post, there's no headline she right, probably could put right, to, right. to dig her out there. So it's the like, it's the style of post where you have to have the talent period. Ex exactly. Like, yep. Like it's mm -hmm. like if you're going to lean on this is the forefront, that shit gotta be good. And here's some <laughs> <laughs> Here's some alternatives, right? So, yeah. Can you sing in an acapella style? Yes or no? Maybe you can't. Okay, cool. And if you're a rapper, can you freestyle, all right, in general? No, you can't freestyle for real? All right, cool. Why don't you rap something that's rehearsed? Yep. A lot of people do that these days, all right? And a singer, you can do something that's, um, you know, pre-recorded. It doesn't have to necessarily be you singing acapella. It could be actual recorded version and we can still work with that because the music post then becomes your music video yep right um a couple of your songs whatever right it could be other versions of your music they don't just have to be you singing live like talent show wise yeah exactly or rapping live like talent show wise yep once you have that then it just becomes all right can i at least still be good and to some degree, period. Because yeah. if you can't now get behind, get in the booth and it sounds good when you sing, if you can't like rap your song and it still strike a chord instead of just freestyling, then I don't know what to tell you. But the beautiful thing about this is like at the end of the day, when you display yourself as an artist, you're getting people to pay attention to one, your talent, if your talent is like singing, that's your voice. Or two, your songwriting, if you're like a rapper or if you're a singer songwriter. And that's another big thing. But again, the songwriter, those lyrics got to hit. Yeah. All right. But it's a huge, huge deal to get people to pay attention to your actual songwriting skill because now they're valuing you like way deeper than just, oh, you have the talent to sing or you have the talent to like rap in a cool technical way or, or, or whatever. Yep, yeah, yeah, cause that was gonna, I was gonna say like, I, a, a rap example I saw of something like this recently, um, I saw this Big Sean post that was like highlighting a bunch of his freestyles. And so it was literally just like, you know, Big Sean doesn't get enough credit as, as being a great freestyler. And it was just, different segments of different freestyle series that he'd done over the years. So, mm -hmm. and yeah, in that example, right, it's like, okay, the goal of this post is to remind people that Big Sean is a good rapper freestyler. So let's go pull the best moments of him rapping and freestyling no matter where they came from. So that's a good call. Like it doesn't have to always be like these raw posts. It's always gonna come down to like what you're trying to emphasize. You just gotta make sure the posts, all the posts in the posts are emphasizing whatever the musicality you want people to take away from that. Yeah, exactly, that post. exactly. And the second one we'll go over is a narrative style post. So check this out. It's not a whole lot of depth and why bother. Nigga, be honest, never see caution. You just scared to get. All right, so this is a clip of this artist Ray Khalil rapping on a show called Rhythm and Flow. The whole headline is Ray went from a contestant on Rhythm and Flow freestyling over Anderson Pax drums to being signed to his label ape shit. All right, cool. So Anderson Pack's new artist, Ray Khalil, drops her debut single. So that they gave that headline, that narrative to start with. Mm -hmm. And now the next post is, bam, drop music. And also she wrote Lockdown for Anderson Pack. So she wrote another song. The next headline, this is all in the carousel. Her pin game is crazy. She also wrote Life is Good. So what's happening here 
the narrative one is the thing that kicked it off because you could almost say some of this stuff is just music driven because it's saying oh she wrote this song yep. oh she wrote this song that's the music driven aspect of it but they didn't kick it off with music driven they kicked it off with this story of she went from a to b yep classic rags to riches story classic rags, rags to yep. riches we see that one over and over again now your story doesn't have to be a a to b rags to riches it could be uh something is happening right now yep right whatever that is i'm trying to think of a, a narrative that isn't um that isn't like that right let's see i, I have this one artist I'm consulting for that I'm trying to get to do a post similar to this and so the idea I have for him I was like hey the first slide should be um something like you're bringing soul music back or you're representing whatever there we go second slide I was like should be a fan comment saying something like yo y'all are late dude has been here forever and then the content under it be like his first ever viral TikTok and then the third slide be something like, you know, bro is always dropping the heat and then it'd be like one of his more popular singers that like his fans like already know. So like that, is, yeah, it's something like that where it's like, like you said, the narrative doesn't, it doesn't have to be rags or riches. It doesn't have to be um, some of the more generic stuff. It's really up to you to just streamline the post in a way that it does tell a story. Kind of going back to the musicality is like, what is the point of the story you want to focus on? So her point of the story her story was to to tie her into Anderson Pack story and to also paint that Rags to Riches story. Like those are the two mm -hmm. big parts. Hey, she's Anderson Pack affiliated, and she was just some motherfucker on a on a on a TV show a couple of years ago. And now look at her, right? That's yep. the narrative. But like, if that you don't have that type of narrative, it's okay, right? Because I know a lot of times artists don't have like these dramatic stories to tell all the time. You know, and even her, there's gonna be a point in her career where like we already know that, so she's not gonna be able to use it as much anymore, right? Um, yep. As she gets bigger, but. I think like that's the most important part is like as long as you're streamlining it together in a way that is telling a story throughout the post, the story can damn near be about anything as long as the, the content correlates to it in a good way. And is, of course, you know, it doesn't need to be said, but it's good content, you know what I'm saying? Um, but, but yeah, no, nah, I get what you're saying. I want to drop a quick note for anybody who has a fan problem and not just any old fan problem, but the type of fan problem that we encountered after helping a lot of artists go viral, have a lot of success, get a lot of streams, but still not being able to know who exactly are my fans? How do I reach them? How do I actually leverage that to sell merch, go to a show? Because that's where Spotify leaves us without knowing who our real people are. Same for social media. If you've had this problem, I'll tell you how we've been solving it at our agency for a while now. And the pro version is just now being released to be accessible to any artist or manager out there. I'm talking about Forever Fan. A lot of the campaigns and successes that y'all have heard us talk about on this channel have been powered by that software that's made finding and understanding your true fans simple so they support you with their pockets. Because we all need a little money in this music thing. And now they're making it available to our audience for only $1 at foreverfanmusic.com slash no labels, no labels with an S at the end. And you got to put in the code no labels zero two. All right. Now, look, the DSPs, the social media platforms, I think they've shown us how much they care about artists for a while now. So at this point, we can all play naive or actually do something about it. Bet on yourself at foreverfanmusic.com slash no labels. And again, put in the code no labels zero two to get initial access for only one dollar. Let's get back to this episode. The next one is the cultural moment style post. OK, so this one's simple and straightforward. We're not going to spend too much time in it. But one of the example posts is Tyler, the artist Tyler. She pulls up to Kai Sinat stream. So the cultural moment is she was on a stream that would by somebody who is recognized in a specific culture that she's trying to tap into. Yep. Right. That's really the straightforward thing, right? Everybody has their own niche. You might think, well, I know Kaiser Nuts every uh, really big. I can't get on his stream. It's not really about that, right? It's what is a popular platform, a popular figure, um, show, whatever makes sense in my niche, whatever my my audience consumes. Maybe there's a YouTube page and 
it's like an anime YouTube page, and I got my music on the back of the anime page that, that puts a, um, together these compilations of Dragon Ball Z songs. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, clips or whatever, right? But getting yourself on this recognized platform, right? This platform that has a brand itself, all right, within your audience, and then sharing that happening over and over again as much as possible. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah I agree. Because I, I think, yeah, I, you hit the nail on the head, right? Cultural moments, I think, sometimes can can be unfairly tied back just to big platforms, but it, it really could be anything. It could be a, a TV show moment. It could mm-hmm. be a festival. It could be, um, I mean, you run into somebody. Like, if, if Sean, you know, was out in the world doing Sean things and you ran to Issa Rae, and she gave you some advice, and for whatever reason you caught it on camera, hey, that needs to go out. Issa Rae is a cultural figure, yeah, and she provided a cultural moment, right? If you become, you know, uh, the, the great brand man, Sean, you know what I'm saying, five tens, man, that's gonna be a big cultural moment for people, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. yo, there was a point in time where Issa Rae gave Sean some advice, and apparently it worked out, you know what I'm saying? So it's- it, Thank you, Issa. <laughs> exactly, thank you, Issa. So I, I do think cultural moment PR campaigns can sometimes be harder because, like, you're right. If it's not super obvious like it was with Kyle, I think sometimes people miss them because either they aren't as aware of how culturally impactful a certain moment or thing may have been, or they may not. It could have been on accident. Like, they accidentally stumbled into a cultural moment, but they don't recognize, like, what's going on. But, like, that is the one where, like, I would say out of all of them, well, maybe other than this one we're about to get into, probably requires the most amount of just like social awareness. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to really know what's going on in the world and what people are caring about culturally to do a good cultural post. Mm, so yeah. like to your point, people care about Cosnet. So it's a good moment. And if she had just went on some other random streamer who let's just say streamer who's big in his own regard but doesn't have the same cultural weight unless she said or did something crazy that made it a culture moment, they probably wouldn't have seeded it out because it wouldn't have any cultural ties. But it's like, okay, Kyle Sinat is cultural enough that it makes his work, whether or not she says something that's culturally relevant. You know what I'm saying? But right. you get a situation where the two kind of happen, you get the, the perfect storm out of it. But Facts. Yeah. Facts. And the next one is brand perception, right? A brand perception style post. This one is Friday has activated. Friday is an artist, by the way, for y'all who don't know. Friday has activated the Haitians on TikTok with his Creole speaking performance of Done For Me. Now, why is this one important? Like, what is the brand perception that's being displayed? One, there's people who don't know that Friday is Haitian. Yep. All right. So he's making a connection with that community. So now you know this fact about him. And then two, he's showing support. All right yep. within this community so anybody watching this one if i'm a non-haitian i'm like oh man hey haitians really rock with friday mm-hmm. right it's one thing to know that he is but also to know that he has backed up he's backed up by yep. his community yep. those are two separate things and then me maybe if i am a haitian maybe that may that might make me a little bit more receptive to him to see like some of my community now not only is rocking with him but he's actually associating and somehow like uh, showing love somehow within our community, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Not just ignoring his heritage there. Yep. What's a completely different version of this? There's an artist, I referenced him a minute ago, probably like a month or two. Um, it was a post on Underground Sounds where this artist got a post on the page and it was a carousel of women listening to his song, All right? One of those women being R- Ruby Rose, and the whole idea was this artist wanted to look cool to other artists in his category, particularly to show that women rock with him and thereby getting support from the guys and his audience too. Like, yeah, ladies love me. Like, It's one thing to be like, oh yeah, the dudes love me and y'all love my music. That's one brand, but it's another brand to have like, oh, I get girls too, yep. right? That's a different type of cool within a young man audience, right? And yep. he's, a lot of his uh, followers are teens. So you have all this support of women rocking with your music, right? In this carousel, your audience is now seeing that. And then and in that particular audience, Ruby Rose is the woman, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Versus you could have had Zendaya, you could have had, I don't know, Lotto or Cardi B, like they all have social clout, but within that particular audience, 
like Ruby Rose is like one of their main women that they focus on love and and talk about right yeah. so that's just being very aware what does your audience care about what do you what brand do you want to um convey I want to convey to my audience that that woman rock with me I'm a cool guy who gets girls and I want to pay for a post of the girl that all these guys want she, acknowledging me because that's going to give me even bigger cool points. That's a cool point, suppose. That's what that's, that's that's what that's what it comes down to. And then that could look like, hey, uh, I want to look like I um have this support for America, and I'm doing things associated with vet- veterans and stuff like. There's all these different types of posts, but that's what we call brand perception. Because in one post, you literally can get this one idea across, and people run with it. Period. Yep. Like, it doesn't take much time where some of these other posts like or trying to make us um trying to make yourself go viral right Re- might require no i don't say viral trying to like make a song take off right that might take multiple posts probably does take multiple posts mm-hmm. and activity yeah. and then the streams go up over time but no matter how viral this post of friday talking about the haitians all right goes if i see the post the work is done yeah. It doesn't take me to hear it a bunch of times and see it a bunch of times. Like the fact is kind of like just there. Yes, because, you know, and just to bring the point back around is because in this post, once again, the music is a, it, the music is a point in it, but it's the, the second point. The first point is, hey, I just want to make sure you're aware of the Haitian heritage and that mm-hmm. the Haitian community is rocking with him. So like, even if you had left this post, not, Caring about the song, but you knew that the post would still be successful. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Um, and like that's what's great about this these type of posts is that, you know, people, for lack of better terms, are, are sheep. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but people like to see that other people are rocking with something. Mm-hmm. So the fact that in this Friday post, for example, that he's able to pull so many examples, even if like these five videos were the only five videos of Haitians fucking with him. Let's just say this was it, right? It's enough because most people aren't going to go beyond this post to really feel like nobody's about to go ask their, 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 you know, local Haitian friend, like, yo, do you fuck with Friday? They're probably not going that deep, right? So we're just taking the post as is at face value because there's enough proof in it to make me believe it, you know what I'm saying, for what it is. And like that is what's really important for stuff like this. And what's really cool about posts like this is that sometimes they build up in a really organic way because you have tapped into a certain community and they are showing you love and like all you have to do is just wait until you have enough good posts from that community fucking with you and then you could easily execute something like this right because let's say in the let's say like it was skaters right and let's say it was a bunch of skaters skating to this song like he could have very easily pulled like the six best skate clips of his song and be like yo like look at how skaters are fucking with my song right yeah. like skaters are out here doing crazy ass tricks to, to my new single and that would have had a similar impact, but in a, in a different space. What about the association posts? That's the next one. Ooh, we don't have an example, just explain it, because it's pretty simple. Yeah, it's pretty simple. So association posts essentially are a way for you to include yourself in a conversation with other artists who are ideally in the same space as you, and then also ideally bigger than you, um, or the same size if you're if you're a, pretty, if you, if you're a mid-sized artist and up you want to go same and, and bigger if you're a small artist 100 percent should all, just always just be big artists right so um how can i give a, a verbal example so let's say i'm on hollywood unlock because that's what we're looking at right now right and hollywood unlock makes a post and says like hey i don't know springtime is coming up people about to be back outside these are the the five the, these are the five songs that make me want to go outside and and just you know get get wild get dirty and it's Cardi B a Cardi B song a sexy red song a Lotto song and then Sean new single right now what I've effectively done is I've thrown you into the conversation of party songs for the summer or for this particular vibe or mood that's coming up and I've also made it to where the fans of these artists are now aware of you and they're gonna think about you in context to these other artists because the first time they were introduced to you was in comparison to these other artists or in the same conversation as them. So it's a really good way, one, just to kind of like bring in traffic around yourself because you can use the face and the name of these bigger artists to just get people to click on the post, right? 
Like you don't carry the burden of the performance for the post in the same way that you was if the post was only about you. It becomes like a collective thing. Downside to it, I guess, is like you are kind of like giving promo to the other artists, but the pros vastly outweigh the cons of that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's for, not like most of the time, at all. Yeah, no. it just is what it is. Yeah, it is right? what it is, right? So, but that's how I look at associations. Like, how do I get myself associated with a group of artists or a particular topic or subject? Kanye was a well a walking association post for years when he say stuff like, "I'm Steve Jobs." I'm the Walt Disney of, yep, yep. like always associating. People were not thinking about Kanye in that light before mm-hmm. Kanye would make those statements. Yeah. Some people will argue they I, they still don't, whatever, but you get my point, right? Before Kanye was known as being great at music and great as Kanye, right? But he was not being looked at as just an overall creator in the economy, and et cetera, until he started comparing to himself to Tesla, Steve Jobs, insert the plethora of names that he would throw out there, yep. right? Because he saw himself in that light and he wanted people to see himself in that light. And as much as some people might not feel like it worked for them, it definitely worked for the masses. Yeah, 100%. Because like, like you said, if you even if you had never thought of him in that way, now even being able to leave that post and, and I can turn to you and Sean and go say like, man, bro, it's crazy. They comparing Kanye to Steve Jobs. And you could be like, bro, Kanye ain't nowhere near Steve Jobs. He ain't never did blah, blah, blah. Once again, post is a success because all we wanted you to do is think about them in the same conversation. Yep. And now exactly. when you think Elon, or not Elon Musk, you think Steve Jobs, now your brain might go to Kanye because you like, man, you might be watching a Steve Jobs doc and be like, man, I can't believe this nigga Kanye thought he was as, as good. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. either way, Kanye is now in your brain because of the way that they were kind of correlated together. And so I think like for research purposes, since we can't show it, we're gonna, just, we're gonna have to give some pages, some shout outs. I think two of the best accounts that do music association posts. There's one account called Saving Connie. Um, they do a really good job in the R&B space. And then you mentioned one earlier, um, Underground Sound does a really good job yeah, in, the, yeah. in the rap space of doing it. But like, that's the best way to think about it is like, how do I insert myself into the conversation of other artists that are bigger than me? And most of the time it's gonna be about either comparing yourself artistically um, to these other artists or comparing the vibe or messaging of your music or song to the vibe and messaging of other artists' songs, right? And the closer you can get them to kind of be on in, in terms of like the same wavelength for that stuff, typically the better the association posts do, right? Cause like in that same example, I got this thread coming out about best twerk songs of the summer and I fuck around and throw a, a I don't know, like a, like a Justin Bieber song in there. It's, it, it's, unless it's that type of song, it's not gonna hit the same, right? Cause it, it's gonna immediately break the association for the fan because it, it, it when they consume the content, it doesn't it doesn't feel like it all belongs in the same world. But if I'm, like I said, now we do a, a, a carousel post about, you know, best, I don't know, pop songs that make you wanna fall in love, Justin Bieber's song might fit better in that conversation and it feels more organic because the person watching it can imagine a world where like all these songs are getting played Mm. together at the same time. And I guess that's the best way to think about it is like how you're building a world with these association posts, but you have to make sure that the world is at least believable. Sure, for sure. And like, I just want to stand, stand on the idea of the power of conversation. All right. You, you touched on that a little bit, but I don't think people understand how powerful, even if something is untrue, just being in the same conversation is, no matter what the conclusion of the conversation is. Yes, 100%. Right? Like, we think of so many people within conversations through association. Like, you hear Michael Jackson and Prince. They're not really that close in terms of the types of music that they make or the style or the listening session a lot of times. It's not that they don't have any overlap at all, but... Like they got pushed together, right? And they got compared more so because of the conversation media wise pushing them together than really needing or deserving to be compared more than any other artist out there, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why you'll see like women um, artists complain when they get compared because they know that can have a positive or a negative impact. It could be a hard thing to sustain. And you see it heavily in sports where you'll see Michael Jordan, LeBron James, right? 
Like, how did they, and then, or, or it was Kobe and Jordan, or it was X, Y, and Z and Jordan. Jordan was a very strong person to associate people people yeah, with. Yeah. So now all I got to do is compare, and there'll be some people who don't stick and some people who do stick. But even when people are like, nah, Jordan's way better than this person, you are now elevating yourself to people by saying, well, this person, if, to be compared to number one, right? If we're considering a Jordan number one in just the the anchor that people are being compared to, to be compared to number one, well, there's a whole field of people that you must be better than, yeah. right? So you at least gain that equity yeah. in comparison. That's a good point. I didn't think about it that way. That, that's a great point, actually. It's a powerful thing, man. <laughs> just being in the conversation, man, it's, it's a, it, that's what association posts are doing. Yeah, because that's the thing, man. I, I just had this conversation with an artist. You just got to get ready to clip this up because I feel like I'm about to snap. You know what I'm saying? But um, <laughs> I personally think that when it comes to social media seeding and these style of social media PR campaigns, the worst outcome of your post is for people to leave with no opinion, right? Yeah. If I see your post and I love the song or the narrative or I hate the song or the narrative, in my in my marketer brain, mission accomplished because we now at least made you a conversation piece. People can now debate about you. Sean can tell talk about how much he loves you, and in the same breath, I can come behind and say talk about how much I, I hate you. Right? Yeah. The worst thing that you can make a person feel is indifferent. Yep. That's always. Artist. That's the worst thing you can do because indifference leads to nowhere, you know what I'm saying? Doesn't. People don't talk about things they're indifferent about. People don't talk about things they don't care about. And so like, I mean, you will realize, you know, I don't think it's something we maybe said blatantly, but a lot of these posts and these post styles have emotional undertones that are trying to force you to have a conversation about something or to at least acknowledge something, Yeah. right? It's, it's they're, they're, they're intentionally trying to elicit an emotion out of you, good or bad, because they know that emotion is gonna make you comment it's gonna make you share. It's gonna make you watch the video a couple of times. Let me watch this Friday post, man. Is this nigga, is he really Haitian? Let me let me watch a couple of these videos and make sure these real, like these real legit Haitians, you know what I'm saying? And these, you know what I'm saying? It's making people engage with the post in the way that they normally maybe wouldn't. Mm -hmm. And it's all those micro actions that lead to a viral post, right? And so sometimes when you see these posts and you're like, damn, how this post get? 100,000 views on, or 100,000 likes on, do people really like the song or the video that much? Sometimes the answer is yes, and sometimes the answer is not necessarily, but it created a conversation for people to have, and people like having conversations. 100%, <laughs> 100%, bro. And the last post style is lifestyle slash, I'll just say you said it or did it, all right? Yeah. This is like coverage yeah. of something that you, accomplished or yeah. not even accomplished cuz that makes it feel like I achieved but you just said or did. Yeah, right? said or did, yep. Right? Um so the lifestyle portion of it on one side of the spectrum you shouldn't do this as an indie artist because it only matters if people really care about your brand. Yeah, people got to care about the life to care about the lifestyle. <laughs> right, right? Like Drake could go to Target and they're like, "Oh my gosh, Drake was in Target." And some people will click. Cool. But the said or did you can find pockets where even as a quote unquote nobody with not a bit of attention, you could have zero followers and post and find the right pocket and get a, a lot of attention. Yeah. 100%. Right. So here's an example. Jim Jones, Meek Mill, Rick Ross and other artists are urged by D1 to reconsider their lyrics that glorify de destructiveness. We'll play a little bit of the clip just to add a little bit more context, especially for people who haven't seen Jim Jones, you could do better, brother. I love you too much. I love you too much to not be honest with you. Rick Ross, you could do better, brother. Meek Mill, you could do better, brother. I love you too much not to be honest with you. Are you the face of prison reform? Because I have, uh, are you the face of prison reform? Or are you sitting here on your new song with Ross talking about getting somebody murked and out at the red light? Which one is it, bro? So in this post, he's basically calling out his hypocrisy and just negative impact provided by these artists who are putting out lyrics that have negative impact, period, right? So that's a that's a message that strikes a chord with a lot of people. So you get that post, say rapper D1, 
I don't even know who D1 is. D1 can have zero followers, but I agree with what D1 is saying. Or maybe I disagree and I'm defending these names of Rick Ross, Meek Mill, Jim Jones, etc. But I instantly can get an image right from it right people yep. see me and they say oh i'm the guy who was calling out rick ross and all these other people and then two people start to form an opinion around something that i'm saying yep. or something that i did right because there's a an alternate if i did something you could have been just like d1 could have been on a skateboard and did like this a really crazy trick or whatever that was just interesting or i don't know a magic trick and they were like oh, a rapper yeah. did some kind of crazy magic yeah. that also could matter yeah. or when we did the chad focus headline right like rapper right stole two million dollars worth of money to create like for his marketing promo yeah people care right about who that person is regardless of knowing who that person is yeah right so you can insert your way into these moments, and it doesn't have to be controversial. That's why I say you could have did a school skateboard trick. It could have just been a really good talent. Think about the random videos you've seen of someone, I don't know, just doing something interesting, Yeah. right? And, yeah. and, it, and it was going viral. But it has to be something that you said or did that's interesting regardless of who did it, Yeah. right? Yep. And now, of course, you insert yourself, and you happen to be the person who did it. Yeah, and I, I like this too because, I mean, this post is a good example of put in the audience in a position where they have to pick a side. Mm. And if you can force people to pick a side, you uh, do effectively force them to, to engage in conversation about the thing, For right? Sure. It goes back to the making sure people aren't indifferent. Now, what I also really like about this style of post is that if you do it well, it opens up a completely new content um, bucket for you, right? Because now, I mean, D1 has been making talking head videos for like forever at this point. But let's just imagine he was completely new and this was a lot of people's first introduction to him. He has now effectively set himself up to continue just talking for content. And, you know, artists, I, I don't know if y'all realize this, but a lot of y'all don't talk. So sometimes that in itself is just interesting because it's like, yeah. you know, fans like to hear what people on the inside are thinking. And even though there are a lot of people that do talk about the industry and their experiences within it, it's not a lot in, in grand context of like how many people are in it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So fans still do hang on to like when they feel like, oh, somebody like slipped outside the gate and like telling us something or sharing the pain that like the people inside don't want them to share, right? And so if D1 wanted to, he could stop making music content forever and only do talking head content and probably still be okay because he opened the door for himself with this. And so, like I said, these style of posts are really interesting because if you can sell yourself to your audience and the existing audience as a person with opinions and ideas that are being shared, then whenever you're in a position where you need to create a moment and you don't want to do that through artistic content, you can just go talk. And in my opinion, that's one of the most powerful forms of social PR because it's, it's not too many artists that can, that can do that. Mm. No, that's a good point. That's a really good point. Uh, shoot, man, I say this. This is going to be part one, like I said, of how do you break an artist with the legitimate image? Because just getting streams, just getting views, that's not breaking your image as an artist where people know you and they rock with you specifically as you. The follow up videos we're going to get into. How do you master captions? All right. How do you find the right pages? Understand how to utilize those pages. But for now. We're going to end it here. If y'all want to hop into this conversation or get help before then, hop into our free community, nolabelsnecessary.com, and you can ask for help or thoughts on your captions, um, pages, and get a lot of help around step-by-step -step courses of marketing strategies that we've implemented uh, over and over again to create success. I'm Brad Man Sean. And I'm Corey. And this is yet another episode of No Labels Necessary Podcast. Peace. Peace.